Welcome back guys, it's thrift flip time. In today's video, I went and got myself a thrift haul and I'm going to take you guys along with me on the items that I got, show those to you and how we transform them. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, spring is among us, or at least there is wishful thinking. With that comes craft shows and different things, so I am trying to prep for that. So I decided that I should probably start getting moving on several items. So my thrift haul was awesome with a few items that I thought would be perfect for vases. Um, I found this little terracotta, like one stem type um, little bottle that I think would just look super cute with just a little bit of floral in it. I found this really cool metal mug that I think would look great with some florals in it and this super cute wooden bucket all at my local thrift store. So I'm going to show you what I'll be doing with those. I also have this old white frame, which was actually from a previous project that I did that wasn't my favorite. Um, so I am revamping that. I had already taken that apart several months ago to reuse parts of it. This was a frame I picked up from Walmart and had kind of, um, pre-painted and stuff for that other project, but I'll be showing you what I'm going to do with that. I also have this old wreath that my friend had given me um, to do whatever I wish, so I'm going to be revamping that. And then also this super cute birdhouse that I had found. The moment that I found it, I saw it and it just drew me in. I knew it had so much potential and I'm very excited to show you guys what we do with that. So let's go ahead and get started with the easiest of the flips and that would be the three containers that I'm going to be using as bases for some faux florals. I have that small terracotta jar literally just going to clean it. I wiped it down really good, took off all of the stickers and took a dry um, paintbrush and kind of swirled it around in the bottom just to break up any dirt and dust that's in there and dumped that out. Um, if I would have gotten a bunch of nasty stuff I would have um, tried to clean it a little further but it was, it was pretty decent fine and, and very clean when I already got it. So with that one, we're already done. And I'm going to be taking these three tulips that I found at the Target um, like dollar spot that they have. They're very springy. They're very cute. Um, and I think that they would be perfect for craft fairs coming up this spring. So I'm going to place those inside this bottle. And then we are done with this one. So I have cleaned and prepped the, the mug and the wooden bucket, removing stickers, wiping them down, cleaning them up. I'm doing any prep work that I need to, to get them ready. And then with the mug, I have the, these florals that I got. All of my florals, I usually buy off season. That way I can um, save a bunch of money, usually 40 to 50% off, if not more, depending on when you hit the sales. And I don't remember what store I got these ones from, but they're these beautiful, like cascading flowers. And I do apologize. I don't know the names of all the flowers. I don't have a green thumb. All of my florals are going to be fake because I kill things. So I have had these for I think since last year I picked them up off season and they are beautiful and I could just picture them in this tall metal um, mug. So I am going to be placing those in there. I'm just going to cut them off of the stem to get them individual and kind of place them in as I see fit. The bottom of this is clear so I didn't put any foam or anything in the bottom. Um, just because if you lift it, I want you to just be able to see the stems and that. It was super simple. I thought about putting a cute phrase or like fresh flowers or something on the actual mug. I'm doing like a stencil chalk over situation, but I love the simplicity of this and I didn't want to touch it. The last one that I have is the little wooden bucket. I'm pretty sure this was originally from Hobby Lobby that somebody sent over to our local thrift store and I just happened to be the lucky person to find it. So I'm gonna be doing some of the Walmart lavender in this. Um, if you don't know, Walmart has a really good section of florals these days and I love their lavender, their um, eucalyptus and their, I think it's, uh, gosh, what's it called Their Hold on, I think I have the tag, no. Boxwood. They're boxwood, boxwood greenery. Um, but it's all really pretty and it's at really decent prices. So check out your local Walmart for that. Um, for the bucket, I'm just going to be using a floral block, cutting it down to where it fits. Um, since it is a circle and I have a square, I'm just going to cut down little slivers to fill in the gaps. And then I'm just going to cut all of the lavender apart. I used two picks of it, um, cut them all down and stuck them in individually 
just till it was nice and full and I think it turned out super cute, super simple, super easy. If you find a container that you love and you're just not sure what to do with it, that's my suggestion. Get get the florals that you like and add them in and it just will vamp it up to the next level. Next, we're going to be working on this little arch, which I apologize if I didn't mention this in the beginning. I have so many projects, I'm trying to remember them all. But I have this little small um, shelf sitter that I had found. Um, I don't know, It's I love the shape. I think it's really cute, but the design's not doing much for me. So what I want to do is remove the stickers, clean it up, and then I did sand down the front because the, um, the lettering and the picture that's on there is raised, and I did not want that to show through when I painted it. So I gave it a nice little sanding, cleaned it up really well, and then I was ready to paint. For this, I'm just using white chalk paint and giving it a good coat. I did two coats on it. I did the front and I did the back because I like my pieces to be complete. So I painted the back as well. I waited for that to dry and then I sanded down a little bit on the front just to make sure I didn't have any brush strokes to make it a little bit more smooth. And then after that, I was ready to age it. So to do this, I am using the Waverly Antique Wax. I have this watered down already in my little bottle. Um, so I usually, if I don't want it to be super dark, I will just thin it down a little bit with some water and that kind of changes how dark it's gonna be because if you do something once and it's not dark enough, you can go over it again. You can't go backwards. So I have watered this down a bit and I'm going to be doing a dry brush technique on it to kind of age it and just give it like a different look. So to dry brush, I'm using a really rough um, bristled brush, dipping it, dabbing off all the excess, and then just running my brush over. Um, again, with this, start out lighter, add more as you, as you decide that you need more or less. Um, you can go backwards on this one a little bit um, using this technique. So if I were have any areas that I went too heavy with the antiquing wax, after it's completely dry, I can go back over with my base color, which would be the white, use that same brush and kind of break up those areas and just keep going back and forth until I'm ready. Um, you just wanna make sure each layer is dry whenever you're doing that. But I have aged that and then I am going to be doing a little pocket on the front of this. Now, if you haven't seen any of the pocket stuff, it's kind of, kind of trendy right now, but it's super cute. So we're gonna be adding a burlap pocket to this. Now, I just have this little scrap piece of burlap and I'm gonna cut it down to size. If you don't know, cutting burlap um, to make it nice and straight is as easy as pulling the string out. You'll be able to see in between the rows where the one is missing and that'll help you keep cutting on a straight line. So that's what I did for this. I just cut it down to size and then I'm ready to start creating the pocket. So for the pocket, you want there to be a hem on the top and both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the top hem. I'm, I went ahead and removed a piece of the string to kind of show me when I fold over to keep it straight. So I did that and I use my hot glue gun, fold it over, wait until it's completely dry, and then I'm ready to go ahead and do the sides as well. So same thing, I'm just gonna fold them over as straight as I can, hot glue them down. Um, once it's nice and dry, I'm ready to place it onto the arch. So I just wanna kind of center it up, make sure it's the size that I need, cut it down to size as, I, as it's needed, and then I am ready to apply it. Now, what we wanna do is kind of be aware of the visual of where you want it to be placed. You're gonna put a bead of glue down on the bottom for as low as you want it to go. You're gonna put it face down to where the hem would be closest to you and that bottom edge that's not hemmed, you're gonna put that on top of the glue. Then you're gonna let that dry all the way and fold it over itself. And that's what's gonna create the pocket. It's gonna um, give you a nice seam, but it's also gonna create like a little catch for whatever you wanna put in there. Once you've done that, you're ready to attach the sides. You just run um, your glue or whatever you're using to um, adhere it up both sides, but do not put anything on the top. So put it on your sides, make sure it's nice and even, fold it over and hold it in place until it's ready. Again, you're not doing anything with that top edge because you want that to stay open to create the pocket. Once it's dry, you're ready to just go ahead and put in whatever your decor is gonna be. I'm gonna be using some of that boxwood greenery um, and some little um, white florals that I took off of 
um, another piece that I have and tuck those in and just design it the way I want. And I love the, how this little piece turned out. Super cute, super easy. Um, it just adds a little pop to your space. And I am really into the faux flowers, especially because it's springtime. So I, I highly suggest you give in the pocket trend um, a try. It's super cute. I will put in the description the last one that I did. I redid a frame with a pocket and did florals, and it's super cute too. So um, give it a try. If you do, leave me a comment below of what you did, how you did it, um, what piece you did it on. And also, time to plug, I just created a Facebook group for a place that you guys can go and post your projects. So it's just now at the beginning of it, so there's not much going on in there just yet, but that's what you guys are for. If you guys want to look in the description, I'll have that group linked in there. Um, it's Inspiring Creativity, Crafting with Candice. And I'm really excited because that'll be a place where you guys can share your projects. They don't have to be inspired by me. Just show me what you guys have going on, your projects, your artwork, um, ask questions to have, you know, just kind of like feed off of each other, get some ideas going. But if you do try any of my crafts or are inspired, I would love for you to, to mention that in there so that I know and I can um, give you guys my feedback on how great you guys are doing. So would really appreciate if you wanted to jump over there and join that group. And then to finish off the little arch, I forgot to mention before I put the burlap on, I did seal that with polycrylic. Um, chalk paint has to be sealed and I didn't want to do wax just because if it is a shelf sitter, I feel like it's going to be being handled and moved around. So a polycrylic will just seal it in really nice without me having to worry about that wearing off eventually. Okay. To the next one, I am redoing the frame that I had previously used for another project. With this, I'm just going to be taking it back to the basics, using that white chalk paint and painting that frame completely white. And then after I've painted that, I'm going to distress it. So I am just taking my sandpaper and hitting all of the edges of that really well, um, sanding it down a little bit. I'm running it over all of it to make the the paint smooth but then on the edges a little rougher so it takes that paint off and just gives us a little bit of a detailed edge. Once that's done I am going to be taking one of these natural um, small wreaths that you can find at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be using my Waverly Antique Wax to darken it or stain it um, and to do that I'm just using a nice um, brush with good bristles. I, I'm using the um, harder bristles for this one instead of like a nice smooth bristled or soft bristled brush just because I know I'm going to be kind of like jamming it into all of those nooks and crannies to try to get all of all of it covered really well um and I with the soft bristles I don't want to I don't want to mess up my really good brushes so with that I'm using this watered down Waverly wax I'm taking it and I'm covering the entire thing with the wax and then once I'm done I'm going to take a paper towel and just kind of instead of wiping I'm just kind of um squeezing it gently around the edges just to get any of the excess wax off and then I'm letting it dry. Once it's dry I'm going to be adding on some of that boxwood greenery that I picked up from Walmart. To do this I'm just cutting them apart to make them individual stems or picks and then I'm going to be pushing them down into the wreath. So these wreaths have all of those like holes the way that it's wrapped so I'm just taking those pushing them in into whatever design that you want um, and then I'm going to add on this piece of lavender. This is from another, I think I got this one at Michael's, I'm pretty sure. Um, just another piece I pick up on sale. Like I said, I like to buy my florals off season because it saves me a lot of money. And then once the next season comes around, I'm already ready for it. I don't have to go search. So I'm just going to add that because I think it just needs a little pop of color. Um, I'm going to add that to where I think it looks good. I'm going to make sure that my frame is facing the way it needs to. It's just a square, but on the back there is a built-in hanger. So I got that positioned correctly. And then any of the areas where, like I positioned my wreath to where it needed to be, certain areas of it touch the frame and others don't. So those areas that will be touching the frame, I put E6000 and hot glue on there. I do the E6000 first, that way my hot glue doesn't um, cool and um, harden up on me. So E6000, then the hot glue, and then I place it down where it needs to go, hold it in place for a little while just to make sure everything is adhered. Once the hot glue sets, then it won't move and it gives the E6000 time to set as well. Um, I'm doing both so that I know that it's going to stay secure 
without moving around or anything, but the E6000 is my long-term hold. My hot glue is just to hold it in place long enough for the E6000 to set. And that's all I'm doing with this project. So I really like how this turned out. It looks much better than the last project that I did with it. So I'm very happy and I'm really glad I decided to redo it. The next one that we're going to be doing is remaking this wreath that I got. It, it is pretty, but I feel like it's a little outdated. It's not really my style. I love the spriggy, like more wildflower type look. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. Thankfully, the person who made this wreath did not use a ton of hot glue. There are some places, but for the most part, she just zip tied each pick on one time and then just after she shoved it down into the wreath. So I just went around and cut all of those zip ties and pulled each of those picks out. And I am going to be saving those because they're beautiful. They just aren't what I want for this wreath any longer. So I put all those to the side and I pulled out the floral that I want to use. I have been holding on to these since last year. I love these florals that I have here and I've just been waiting for the perfect project and this is it. I love the purples and the yellows and the whites and all of those like bright colors but kind of muted not like super in your face. So I think that the ones that I've been using in this video are perfect and that's what I'm going to be doing for this wreath. So I went ahead and cut all of these apart to make individual stems and then I laid them all out off camera just to kind of get an idea of what I want it to look like, how many of each florals that I have, does the spacing look good. Um, I like to do this before I start attaching anything because you don't want to get halfway in and realize you're going to run out of a certain one. You don't want to realize that you don't like that pattern or whatever and have to restart. So it's easier just to lay it out real quick, get an idea in your head, and then move forward. So with this, it's super easy from here. After I know what kind of design I'm going for, um, which in this case is just placing the colors and spacing them out to where I think they would work and get a full wreath from it. I am going to be placing them and just pushing them down in just like I did that other wreath. With this one, there are sticks basically that are um, put together and then there's wire around it holding them in place. So that wire, I'm trying to make sure each pick gets underneath one of those wires. So not only is it getting stuck in between all of the sticks of the wreath, but it's underneath one of those wires so I know it's not just going to fall off. And I didn't worry about zip tying or anything of these because they're in there so tight I don't think I'm gonna have an issue with them falling out because it was really hard to get some of those down in there so I just did that all the way around I took them kind of put where I thought the place should be shoved it down in there to in the place that I want and I did that all the way around once I was done with that I still had some yellow flowers left so I just went back into any areas where I felt like it needed a little extra pop of color and I added those in too it was super simple to redo, but it's so beautiful. I love this wreath. I typically try to not keep many of my own projects. I like to get them out the door, but this one might have to hang on my front door for a while. So let me know what you guys think about this one. What type of wreaths do you guys like? Whether it's floral, mesh, whatever. I kind of play around with all types of different wreaths, but I think this one's one of my favorite, maybe because it's so simple and it was so easy to do, but I love how colorful and welcoming it is. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. All right, the best for last, this birdhouse. You guys, I told you the moment I saw it, like I like ran down the aisle to grab it because I didn't want anyone to get it. It just called to me. I think it's so stunning. The craftsmanship on it is beautiful and I just knew that I could make it into something so much more. So I started with just cleaning it up. Um, this was a process that was pretty dirty. So I didn't want to wet the wood because I didn't want to have to wait for the wood to dry. So I took a lint roller and I rolled it down to pick up all of the loose stuff that was on it. I took a couple sheets off of the roll put them down inside the little fenced in yard area to get all of that dirt that's off. And that's how I got most of the stuff off. Then I took a dry paintbrush and I, excuse me, I used it to basically sweep all of the dirt out of the nooks and crannies and clean it up really well. And then I was able to get started. Now, I knew that I wanted the, to keep it like that rustic feel that it has. It has so much character because it's nice and old and worn and 
that's what makes the piece so special. So I don't want to take that away. So I didn't do any sanding or anything. I am just going to be doing like a very heavy dry brush on it. So I am going to be using white chalk paint for the fence. I am taking it, dipping it in, getting most of the excess off, and then just running it over that fence until I get it as heavy as I want. I want it to look like old and like almost chippy, you know, old fences where the paint's like chipping off in spots and it's not fully covered. And that's the, my goal with this. So I'm gonna do that all over the fence area, the front and then the, the top half of the fence on the inside because you're not gonna really see that. But I wanted to paint it just in case down the line someone wants to replace the florals I put in there. It's completed even if they put shorter flowers in there. So I did that, that for the fence. For the house, I mixed two paints together. I was trying to decide what color I wanted it. I wanted it to be kind of muted, but I didn't want it to be white. So I have Sage and I have Seaside. Is that what it's called yeah seaside villa they're both from folk art and they're chalk paints i mixed those two together to create the color that i wanted i do apologize because i know in the video it you can't quite see the color until it's done so it kind of almost matches up with that white there for a second um, but once your eyes adjust i think you'll see it too so i did that for the entire house and then once that was done i did the roof Originally, I wanted to keep the roof tin and not touch it and leave it, but there was a bunch of stuff. Like I had to chip hot glue off of the where the bird was sitting. I had to kind of fix one area of the fence where it was way too frayed. So I just took um, my box knife and ran it down that fence post to kind of clean it up, but not make it look too clean. Um, and then like on the tin, there was like wax that was dripped off. So I took the razor blade and scraped that off. And um, I don't know. It just wasn't quite meshing with what I wanted after I saw how everything else kind of came together. So I decided to paint it. I used this gray that I have, um, this gray chalk paint that I have. I did one solid coat all over the top and then I wanted to give some dimension back to it and some character to it. So I used a silver metallic and this like black gold metallic color from Color Shift to paint the roof. So what I did is I took the silver, I did a dry brush with it. So I dipped it in the silver, got most of it off, dry brushed that on, let that dry. Um, and I did, I waited until the first coat was dry. Then I took that next blackish goldish color, did the same thing, dipped my brush in it, tapped it off and then brushed over it. Again, I'm using the hard bristle brush where it has lots of texture. Um, I did that all over the th same thing and I feel like that gave it some dimension and a little bit more character and I feel like those colors were much better for the scene that I have created than that dark like brown color that was going on. And because I painted that, I wanted the brown that I had left for the little pegs for the birds to sit on to match. So I painted those with the gray. They weren't as dark as I wanted them to be. So I did go back over them with a little bit of black while it was still wet. So they kind of made like a dark gray color. That way it all just kind of pulls together. Once all of the paint was dry, I, I sealed it with polycrylic. Um, again, I'm not using a wax because I didn't want to have to worry about um, the you know, say they, I would suggest this to be an indoor piece, but they put it on a screen porch or a covered porch or something, and some elements do get to it. Um, I wanted to make sure it would be secure, so sealing it with polycrylic just assures me that I'm giving somebody a piece that even if there's just a little bit of weather getting it to it, it's not just going to crumble before their eyes. So I sealed the whole thing with the polycrylic, and then I was ready to add the florals. For this, again, I just took the floral block that I have, um, you can get these at any of your craft stores, Walmart, um, you can get it at Dollar Tree. So any of those places, I cut it down to fit the area that I needed. And then I did hot glue it to the bottom. So um, I, your hot glue will melt it. So I did it right as my hot glue was warming up to where it wasn't super hot, just enough to get it to stick to where people can pull it back up if they don't want it in there anymore. But it's not just going to fall out or topple out if, you know, there's somebody's transporting it. So I put those in there, I cut down all of those lavender picks, and then I just placed those in as, as I still fit. And then I also took some of the eucalyptus stems and I placed those in there too, just to add a little bit of um, variety to it and a little bit more interest to the flowers. 
and I glued the little birdie back on and that was it for this birdhouse and I am obsessed with it. I would love to know what you guys think. Like what would you have done different with it or do you like my color choices? I genuinely love this piece. It's one of my favorite pieces that I've redone. I just think it's because it was so cute to begin with and it had such a good good bones to it that I didn't really have to do much but take a paintbrush to it. So I believe that's the last of the projects for this video. I would love to know what you guys think about it. Let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you like this content, I would really appreciate it. That lets me know, that lets YouTube know, lets everybody know that we're all on the same page. I'm gonna take you guys in for a closer look, give you a little bit of the before and after just so you can see it all again. I feel like that really helps show you where these pieces started and where they are now, especially since these pieces were just, you know, they they were done. They went went out, luckily didn't end up in a trash can, but um, they needed to find a new home and I am happy to be the place for them. So I'm gonna take you in for a closer look and I will see you next time.